Hey everyone, today on Berlin Bills, I'm gonna show you how to put together this cigar box ukulele step by step. These are the different materials that I'm gonna be using today. So we're gonna need these corner brackets. These are the two inchers. I grabbed a little door hinge and you actually only need the hinge pin on it. This is a remnant of wire. I'm gonna be using the wire for the frets on this one. You're gonna need four different eye bolts. These are four inch by quarter inch. And then obviously you're gonna need some ukulele strings. This is a scrap piece of white oak that was actually a cabinet filler that I rescued from a garbage can. You're gonna need a cigar box. Now, I went with the Havana Honeys. I actually don't smoke, so I have no idea if these are good or not, but I liked the box. I thought it was kind of cool. So I actually got this at a smoke shop. They sold it to me for $5. They normally just throw them away. So that's a good place you can get these. I've also found them at antique stores. And in my case, the smoke shop was right next door to the guitar shop where I got the strings. So it worked out really good. Another important thing that you're gonna need is some Dr. Pepper. I don't know how you can get any project done without it. So I'm just gonna put that on the list. What we need to do now is figure out the layout on our neck. This is a concert ukulele. So if I go from this point right here on the ukulele to the very end right here, that is exactly 15 inches from here to here. So that's where, this is the area that your strings are in essence are floating. So they're touching right here and then they're touching right here. This is 15 inches. So I know on my neck, I'm gonna to need to give 15 inches for the fretboard area. Another thing that I need to be cognizant of is this little bend. So we're gonna recreate the same bend on our neck and without steam and without heat. I'm gonna show you kind of a cheating way to bend wood. My eye bolts are about four inches long, so they're gonna be sticking out like this, and I need enough room where these can stick out, and then the string can bend onto this piece right here. With these being four inches, we're gonna give ourselves about five inches right here. We're gonna need 15 inches from here to here, and then just kind of imagining how you want your, your ukulele to line up with a cigar box, I'm gonna run the neck all the way past. If I have the body set up about like this, I want the neck to run, oh, an inch or two past this box. So whatever size box you get, make sure that you're running it through your box. Marking this out, I'm gonna make a mark at five and a quarter, right here. And what that is, is that's gonna be the top of my guitar, right here, the top of my neck. And I know I need five inches there. I'm gonna trim this a little bit when I, when I square off this end, just because I'm nerdy like that. So I'm gonna go five and a quarter, just give me a little bit of room to trim. And then from here, I'm gonna go 15 inches. So five and a quarter plus 15 is 20 and a quarter, which is right here where I have this mark. And this will be the end of my fretboard. And now from the end of my fretboard, from here to however far you need to go for your box, I need six inches for this box. So I'm gonna make another mark at 26 and a quarter. So I've got my marks here. This is gonna be the head space of my neck, the fretboard again that we talked about. And I got this excess that's from about here over. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off a piece of this to match up the, the length of my head and I'm gonna glue that on there. And this is gonna give me extra material that I can cut off to create a bend. I'm using a Type On 3 glue. This is my favorite glue. You don't necessarily need to go this overkill on it. This is good for indoor, outdoor. It's water resistant. It says waterproof. I, I'm just hesitant to say waterproof, but it's water resistant at the very least. Um, I mean, not that I'm gonna take this ukulele swimming, but here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this on. I'm gonna use a good amount of glue. I don't really want a lot of glue getting around like crazy. I'm gonna put it on there and then I'm just gonna kind of spread it. So we get a good glue area. I'm gonna line it all up so it's all nice and flush and everyone's living in a happy place. You can just put something really heavy on it at this point. I have a couple clamps, so I'm just gonna stick a couple clamps on there just to help it get that pressure. Once you get these clamps on, you're gonna wanna let this glue dry. What I need to do now is figure out what this angle is so that way I can match it on this new headstock that I'm making. I'm gonna cheat and use a digital angle finder. 15 degree angle is what I'm gonna make happen on the rest of this headstock. Now this is our head and what we're gonna do is I've drawn a line to run up here just to give me a reference of where this continuation happens. So having this reference line, I'm now gonna set my protractor right here and I'm gonna draw a line. So that is my 15 degree tilt right there. 
And then I can do the same thing at this point. You can see how we're gonna have that headstock continue right there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that there's a 90 degree angle from where this line meets here, a 90 degree angle from that line up. There's a couple different ways that you can do it. One, you can just set your protractor to 90 degrees and line up with there and then draw it. Or since we know that this is a 15 degree angle here, 15 plus 90 is 105. So if we do a 105 degree angle with this line, we'll have a nice square angle right here. I have a dream. I hope it will come true. Now you might be wondering, because this is shorter than the original five and a quarter inches that I put on there. It's actually about three and an eighth. And I was worrying about that too. But as I place this in place, I think what I can do is hold this back a little bit so that way the string will still come across onto this and work out just fine. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna carefully cut this out on the bandsaw. You can see this is a lot of blade that's exposed, which means that the blade is a lot more likely to walk and not just stay perfectly straight up and down. So I'm gonna cut it really slow and just try and make sure that that blade just slowly chews away at the material. And there you have it, a bent neck. Taking those cuts on the bandsaw really slow, made it so that we kept a nice flat plane right here. I'm gonna come back and sand all this. I didn't necessarily try and get it exactly on my line as I was cutting it. Now, what we need to do, just talking through a few different steps, is we need to cut a shallow groove coming down like this, so that way we can fit a piece in here that those strings are gonna run across. I need to leave this about the same width that it currently is, so that way I can get those four different L brackets on here, as well as those eye bolts. But when we get down to here, we're gonna taper this and we're gonna make this a little bit skinnier so it's easier to hit all the different frets. Now I'm here at my table saw and I'm gonna cut a groove that's gonna go right here. And what I'm gonna do is in that groove, I'm gonna create a little piece that's gonna come up and I'll make little slots that the strings are gonna run through. And that's how I'm gonna keep the spacing on the strings and that's how I'm gonna create um, that this will be the start of our actual fretboard, will be right here. There's a few different ways that you can do this. I'm gonna use my table saw because it's here and it's just easy. You can use a miter box with a hand saw and you can start to cut a nice 90 degree angle for that groove or you could use a file. I'm just gonna use this because it's here and it's just ready to go. So you have a few different options on how to do this, but this is how I'm doing mine. So I'm gonna set the depth of the saw to be about, oh, just under a quarter of an inch or so is where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna take it like this and I'm gonna line it up just like so. Remember, you can always go deeper, but you can't add the material back in nearly as easily. You see, we got a nice little groove. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking another scrap piece of wood. This is a little strip of walnut that I had from another project. And I'm gonna rip it down so that it fits in the curve that we just made. All right, you can see that we've got that, so it fits in there nice and snug. What we need to do now is I need to use a little little file and I need to clean up just, there's a tiny little ridge, I don't know if you can see that, that's left over from the teeth when they're cutting there. I just need to clean up that little ridge so we get an even better fit. Now what I'm gonna be doing is marking out where all the different fret locations are on the neck. What I've done is I've gone online and I punched in some googly terms and I found out where all these different frets needed to be. And then on a different link, I went and they converted it to the nearest 32nd for me. You can go down to the nearest 64th, but I work in 30 seconds and that's kind of my max. You can see I've got these all marked out. What I'm gonna use is a miter box and my little miter saw. And I'm just gonna start cutting a little saw kerf at each of these points. And then I'll use a hand file to kind of widen that, so that way my wires can fit into the grooves that are being created. I'm doing this step before I've shaped the neck because this is still a reference point that I can get a good square 90 degree angle off of this for when I'm trying to make these little curves for these frets. This can be a lot easier than if I do some sort of, you know, angled shape in the neck and then try and do this. That would be a nightmare. So don't skip this step. This is gonna make your life easier.
Now what I'm doing is making the ukulele more comfortable to play. This is a three inch wide piece of stock that I have right now. At the top of the ukulele, I want that to be an inch and five sixteenths wide. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my center point, which is gonna be an inch and a half, so right here. And now what I'm gonna do is an inch and five sixteenths cut into half is, oh crud, quick math time. I just did some very fast math and I know I need a half inch plus five thirty seconds. It will be my half of an inch and five sixteenths. So I'm gonna go over a half inch and I'll go up five thirty seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And that will be the end point there. And I'll do the same thing, half and then five thirty seconds. One, two, three, four, five. I would actually calculate this out, but my calculator is on my phone and my phone is what I'm filming this with. So tough nuggets sometimes. Now when I get down to the very bottom fret, Right here, I want this to be an inch and three quarter wide. Going along these same lines and find the inch and a half mark, which is my center point. And now an inch and three quarter, that's a little bit easier for me to do in my head. Four eighths and three eighths is seven eighths of an inch. So what I can do now, I can take this straight edge and I can draw a line between these two points. And as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that it's gonna be a pain to cut this side on my bandsaw because I have this bend, so I'm actually gonna have to redo it all flipped over. But just so you know, that's the point of what you're doing here is you're being able to draw your line of what you actually want your fret to be so that you can cut it out. Whether you're doing that with a bandsaw, a jigsaw, a coping saw, or just, you know, chiseling it out like a man. There's, there's different options for you. Now I have my lines drawn for how wide I want my actual neck and fretboard to be, but once I get up here to the head, this is kind of a loose interpretation of however you want to do it. I have these different, these four different corner brackets and all of them stuck together tight puts me at two and a half inches wide, which gives me about a quarter of an inch play on each side. So this is kind of you designing it how you want it to be. I think I'm gonna kind of curve mine up like this and then go like that and try and somehow magically match that. Oh boy, somehow on here. If only my left hand could do the same things that my right hand can do, right? And I think what I'm gonna do to make my own life easier is I'm going to draw a little reference points for when that should start to curve. So if I do a line across, another line across and then let's, just, let's say that's where I want it to die in. What I can now do is just go from section to section so I really do like this design. I'm gonna keep that. Erase the cruddy stuff I did over here. Now I know from here I'm gonna come in a quarter inch. So see that same mark? Give myself a reference of a quarter inch and now that's a gentle kind of curve now, I'm ready for the bandsaw. There always has to be that awkward moment when you screw up. I forgot to cut the bottom nut. I cut all these different frets when I had everything nice and square. And you can see I've actually got this all tapered now. So if I just go and put this back in my miter box, it's gonna cut at an angle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my center line right down here. I'm gonna measure 15 inches dead on. And then I'm gonna make some more parallel lines and I'm gonna create a line that's perpendicular to these parallel lines. So anyways, we're gonna make this work. But before you start ripping down, trimming down your sides at a taper, Make sure you cut your nut. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, I'm not sure what this file is called, but it looks like a triangle. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna widen out these little curves that I did earlier. So it's just a little bit easier for that wire to rest in there and give that super glue a little bit more of a bed to do its magical bonding process on. One thing I noticed on my ukulele is on the third, the fifth, the seventh, 
and the 10th and 12th fret spaces, there's a little dot that's been put in and that's just for reference for the player as they're going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the center of each of these little fret spaces and then I'm gonna drill a hole and put a dowel in so that way I can have a dot there. The only dowels that I have are too big. So I went and grabbed some toothpicks out of the kitchen and I'm gonna use these. Now, before you start drilling a hole, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a nail and I'm just gonna hammer it right on each of these center points and it creates a little, little mini pilot hole. And what that does is it keeps your drill bit from wandering all over the, the flat surface. I'm gonna use this little Japanese pool saw. I got this at Harbor Freight for, oh, less than $10. I keep this thing in my tool belt. I love this thing. It's a flush cut saw, so that means that the teeth don't mar the wood that you put it up against. So if I can just kind of push it flat and cut like that. Now I'm gonna sand it all nice and clean. Now, with all the sanding that I've done, it's actually gotten rid of some of my curves. So I need to go deeper in some areas. I'm just gonna take some time to clean those up. So I need to get this hinge pin to set in here, which really what that means is I need to do a heck of a lot more filing. So I've been just been filing away at this, and I've got this little half round file, which I've been really liking, but you can't start with it because it has a tendency to move. So I've been using these little triangle shaped ones, a little bit of this longer rectangular shaped one before you get down to this. But once you get to this point, you can really start to get a good groove made for that hinge pin to rest in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this hinge pin in place and it's holding firm right now without any super glue or anything. It's just, you know, it's got a good little pocket that it can live in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where I wanna cut this off at. I wanna leave a little bit overhanging, but you don't wanna leave too much. So I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch or so. Oh, that's my puppy, he wants to go inside. Anyways, this is, yeah, I don't wanna leave about an eighth of an inch of an overhang. Now what I'm gonna just do is kind of clean up this rough cut that I made. Use a little bit of sandpaper. Or if you have a belt sander handy, you can just go kind of touch it on there. That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. So just showing you, you can do this just with hand sandpaper. Just kind of come in and start to work that edge so it's not so sharp. All right, here comes the big moment. We, my friends, are gonna glue this thing in place. Now we're gonna lay down a bead of super glue. Now, personal preference, I'm gonna have this up towards the player. You can do it either way. I think there's really a right answer in this scenario. But that's just what I prefer. Because I only have, well actually, I'm sure I've got skinny blue tape somewhere. I just don't know where. I know where my green fat tape is. Since I've only got the fat tape that I'm currently using, I have five frets currently exposed. And let's give this a go, everyone. Let's see if my crazy, crazy idea is effective. Okay, so now we're gonna take our wire. And stick it down tight, just like that. I'm gonna hold it for about 10 seconds. All right, and while you let that hold, reach and stretch for your Dr. Pepper. Take a sip, because that is the American way. And now what we're gonna do, we give her a little clip of zine, maybe. Now let's peel off the old taperino. Maybe my experiment did not work as well as I thought it did. Don't be done with your knife like I am sometimes. Be a good boy scout, blood circle, all that important stuff. Oh, come on, Bessie. Work, work, work. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. That's kind of what I'm looking for. That's something I can kind of clean up. I just didn't want the super glue on the wood because that would look like garbage. See that, how oh, it's nice and pretty? That's exactly what I'm looking for. The tape worked. This is frog tape. I don't know if a cheaper tape will work. I love frog tape because it's good tape. Not a sponsor yet, neither is Dr. Pepper, but if they want to sponsor me, I'm open to it because I love frog tape and I love Dr. Pepper. I love Dr. Pepper a lot more than I love frog tape and I really love frog tape. Anyways, let's keep going.
All right, we got all the frets on finally. I'm not gonna lie, that is a very tedious and slow process. So if any of you guys have better ideas on how to do that, I am totally open to hearing them because now I have to cut out the blue tape and it's gonna take a while and I'm a little bitter. I have my Dr. Pepper and I've been listening to some Ian Munsick. So good country music, good Dr. Pepper, no real reason to complain. We have all of the frets glued on and all of that blue and green tape peeled off. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue in this little bridge piece that's gonna go right here. tall and left it big, or wide I should say, because I want this to be something that I can sand and shape in place with the neck. This is my belt sander kind of propped up here on my lathe, but this should work to sand the long edges of these frets smooth. Oh no! Dang it, I lost one. You can see right here, this one popped off. I was hoping that wouldn't happen, but I'd rather it fall off now than when I'm playing it at one point in time. I'll have to re- Cut out all of that super glue and just do the same fun things all over again. As you can see from the initial sanding, we lost this guy. And I don't know what this guy was doing in his life, but he's all bent out of shape. I'm gonna have to pull this one, replace this one. So we got two that we've got to replace so far. Now that I have all my frets on and I've sanded them, there's these little burrs right here that will catch your fingers. And I don't think they're gonna feel very good if I'm playing and I get my finger cut open. So I'm just taking a little file and I'm just kind of coming and I'm just softening that little edge. It takes a second to get it to catch, but kind of doing a glancing blow like this seems to be working pretty good. And then I'm just kind of going off of feel. If it doesn't hurt to do this and push really hard, it's probably in a good place. It takes a little bit of time. Just one of those little details that's gonna make it a lot nicer to play. These frets turned out to be a lot more challenging than I thought they would be. There's just a lot more filing, involved to get them nice and smooth than I initially thought it would take. Also, I'm using the file to kind of round over, not kind of, but to actually round over right where the wood is right here. And it's kind of a fun process, but it has been taking me a while. I think I've been at this for a couple hours now. So when you get to this step, just be aware. It's gonna take some time, but this is literally what you're gonna be running your fingers up and down on, so it's probably worth investing the time. Now what I'm doing is I'm just taking a scrap block of wood and I'm putting the sandpaper on it so it's nice and flat. And I'm just going over these frets to make sure that one isn't higher than the other. Next thing I'm gonna do is I left this bridge long. I'm just gonna take this little pull saw and I'm gonna trim it closer to the side I want it to end at. And you can leave it a little bit big because you can always file it down what you want it to be. Can't add the wood back in very easy, but, oh nuts. Yep, see how I just clip that? Be very careful. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Hey, consider hitting that like button below if this is something that's helping you out. And then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get more content like this. I'll get back to the video now. This top bridge, I think that's the name. Anyways, the part that's gonna have the four strings running through it. I need to have the string about a 16th of an inch up off of this face. So I need a 16th inch gap. So that means I'm gonna be cutting these grooves that are gonna come down and I'm gonna stop them a 16th of an inch above this material right here of the actual fretboard but I don't need this to be this tall. That's really tall and kind of awkward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score a line at about an eighth of an inch. Oh, that was a fail. Having it like this, now what I can do is I can cut across with my saw and then I can notch down a 16th in those four spots. Now, one thing to be aware of too, as I'm doing this is I don't need to cut right on that line. I can leave a little proud and then I can use my file just to clean it up down to the line.
Now, the spacing for the strings from the very center of the string to the next center of the string needs to be 5 16 plus a 32nd. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure exactly how far across I am, which is an inch and 5 16 and then I'm going to subtract whatever 5 16 plus times 3 is, and I'll take that remainder and I'll divide it in two. And that's how far I'll come in for this string and how far I'll come in from this string. Then I'll space it out with that 5 16 inch plus between the uh, four strings. So for my string layout, I have an eighth of an inch from this point to here, and then five sixteenths plus a thirty second, and that'll be the same from here to here, and from here to here, and that leaves me with an eighth of an inch. You're gonna wanna double check on yours to make sure that's exactly the same, but you're gonna want the five sixteenths plus a thirty second for your spacing for your strings, and then this will just be whatever you have left. That makes it so it's equal distance. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my saw and line it right up perfect on there. Oh, nuts. Maybe I'll do this with a file. Maybe that's a better life choice. Even just start it with a file. Here we go. And what you can do is, I'm actually not trying to get dead on at a sixteenth of an inch at this stage. I can always go a little bit lower, but I can't make it bigger as easily. Now what I've done is I've taken those L brackets and I've just laid them out on the back of the headstocks. So they're all nice and loose. And you can see mine have this little bend like that, which means I need to round over this corner. Otherwise, these won't set fully flush with the top of the neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna round that over to make it so that these can set flush. And now just so you know, you can do it all with a file. I cheated, I took this over to my belt sander and did a little bit of work with it over there, but we're right about where I wanna be now. So now all I'm doing is I'm taking these brackets and, oh boy, fly. It is fly season here. I actually bought, about a year ago, I bought this little shotgun that shoots salt. Love that thing. There's actually a video on my channel. That's how much I loved it. I actually made a video about it because it is amazing and I hate flies. So just know, as you see this fly buzzing around, I'm contemplating shooting it. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just laying these brackets out so that they're evenly spaced and that they're not overhanging anything that they're not supposed to be overhanging. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil and very carefully I'm gonna mark the center of each of these holes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my screw, I'm gonna hold it up to my drill bit, and I'm gonna see how deep I want to drill my pilot hole. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the Sharpie right here, and kind of slow. And now I have a mark. And now I know when I, when I hit that mark, don't go farther or else I'm gonna screw it all up. No pun intended. Actually, pun is definitely intended. So just use that to mark it and it's gonna make your life a lot easier instead of guessing. Oh my heavens, these flies are all over. There we go, that's two dead flies. The problem I ran into is these holes were all too high for these little brackets to work where it would have been above my bridge. So also they were too small. So I drilled new quarter inch holes in here and now I'm just cutting the top of this so it doesn't hang out so high on the top. I'm just using a little cutoff wheel. You can use a hacksaw, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this, but I'm just using a cutoff wheel. Now I'm just gonna take a file and I'm gonna clean up these edges. What I'm gonna do now is see how wide my cigar box is. This one is six and three sixteenths of an inch wide. And then what I can do is I know that I want the placement of my neck, I want the sixth fret to line up with the edge of this box right here. That's how I want mine placed. So, I need to measure at this distance, or this location, how wide this is. Then I need to do the same thing down here, how wide it is right here. And then I can mathematically figure out the differences and place it in the center of my box. Now I can double check myself. 
So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six frets up. I'm gonna line that up and see if it lines up in my two marks. It does. Right now, that is placed exactly where I want it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pencil. You can do it with a knife. I'm just gonna do it with a pencil. And I'm gonna score a line. I'm gonna strike it pretty, a few times. So that way I get a really good line to follow, like that. Now my box has a latch, which is great, don't get me wrong, but that is a very weak little latch, and I don't think it's gonna keep the box shut the whole time. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna take a little bit of super glue, and I'm gonna run it along these edges. I'm gonna try and hold it back from the edge, so that way it doesn't drip out a ton, or squeeze out, I should say, a ton, along the edges of the box. Now I apologize, I'm a little cranky. Apparently I have the Rona. So here I am at home. I mean, not that I don't mind being home, but I'm not at work making money. So I'm making a ukulele, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the box. And I'm gonna latch it. I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on it. I'm gonna hold that pressure for about a minute. That is one super glued shut box. So now what I'm gonna do is I still got those markings. I don't know if you can see them too good on the camera of where my neck is. And now when I'm cutting this, I need to make sure that I don't go down too far because if I go down too far, the neck is gonna be recessed into the box and that's not what I'm shooting for. So I want my neck to hold about an eighth of an inch above the box. So that means I need to, my material is three quarters of an inch thick so that means I need to come 5 eighths of an inch down. I'm gonna make some marks. It's gonna make sure that I don't go past that. And then I will cut these lines. There's gotta be more than one way to do this. This is just what my brain's thinking of right now. This is how I'm gonna mark my 5 eighths of an inch down. So I'm just using a framing square. And now I've got my mark at 5 eighths. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of tape. And I'm gonna run that across. And that will help me have a very good visual line of where to stop. Sticky. That's a good sign of this tape. It's pretty much literally got one job and that's to be sticky, so. Okay, there's a few different ways to cut along this line. I'm gonna use this Japanese flush cut saw. You could use a circular saw. I just think that the circular saw might be a little aggressive and might do more damage to the box than I want it to do. So I'm just gonna start with this saw and see how it goes. Now, I did super glue this shut, right? Let's see if we can kind of work a chisel in here and pry this up at the seam. Ooh, that's good on that side. It's sticking to its guns. There we go. Sweet. And now we're gonna take a file and we're gonna clean this up down. See where that blue mark is when you come down about 30 seconds of an inch. So I'm just gonna use a file for that. So looking at this, I don't know if you can see on the camera, I have a little bit of a gap at the top, right there on that left hand side. But I am really tight down here at the bottom. So that's showing me is I need to file away a little bit here at the bottom to make it so that I can slide this farther forward. Now something that you need to remember is a tight fit is the best fit as you're doing this. So just kind of do a lot of checks as you go. Don't feel like you have to get it all in one go, but just kind of slowly dial it in. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Maybe just a hair more, but I'm pretty happy with, it, where, with where that's landing now. Now I'm gonna do, before I glue the neck in, is I'm gonna draw a mark right here, so I can know exactly where the neck meets the box. And now what I can do is shape this backside of the neck so it's more comfortable for my hand to grip while I'm playing. Okay, you can use a lot of different tools for this. You can use a file, you can use a rasp, you can just use sandpaper. You can actually even leave it more square if you like it that way and just kind of ease the edges. I'm going with an angle grinder with a flapper disc on this bad boy. I think this is a 80 grit. 
So it's gonna be really aggressive. And then I'm gonna just clean it up with sandpaper after. is that this sticks out a lot farther than I want it to. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that about an inch past my box. The strings are gonna come in down here and they're gonna rest on here, and then they need to have something to tie off to over here. Originally, I thought that these strings would have loops, so I had something different in mind. So now I'm kinda of going off of just what I've seen in pictures and the other ukulele that I have over here. I'm gonna cut a piece of wood it's gonna go across here. Then I'm gonna drill four evenly spaced holes right across here that I can loop the strings through and then tie them off. So what I've done is I've come an eighth of an inch in from each of the sides and I measured that distance to this distance and I split it up so I could divide this equally into three sections. So I divide it into thirds, one, two, three. And then those are the other two points for my string. So it's right there. And now I'm gonna drill these holes, but before I drill them, I'm gonna give myself a little starter hole so that way my drill bit doesn't wander away. Now I've got this positioned about where I want it, which is I'm just kind of go off an aesthetic thing. This isn't something you have to measure super precise for the placement of this. I just want it to be centered across my neck. So I'm gonna take super glue and run a bead. Slowly push this down. Oh, I really didn't want it to run out, but I guess there's worse things in life. Okay, so squishing that down like so. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna take a pin nailer and I'm gonna shoot a couple pins between the holes just to act as a clamp. Make sure you like where it is before you leave it or nail it because that's where it's gonna live. Now let's see if this works. I'm gonna take this little bit of tape and I'm gonna take the non-sticky side. I'm gonna push it up against there and see if I can scoop out most of that super glue. Yep, that worked. Now I'm about to glue the neck into the body. And what I've done is I've just kind of set it in there. But you can see it's not all the way down. So I'm just gonna put super glue on each of those ledges and then I'm gonna push the neck down onto the body. That way I'm not sliding it in and not just smearing super glue everywhere. Okay, here it goes. Okay, now I'm gonna push that down. Tie onto that super glue. And I'm gonna hold it for about 30 seconds. Just give it good pressure. Now we need to drill a sound hole. You can do a few different things. I just went to Walmart and I got this little hole saw set. I think it was like five bucks. So I'm just gonna drill a hole where I think it looks visually best. And I'm kind of thinking right about here. Our next step is gonna be put a finish on the wood. You really don't have to do this, but it protects the wood and it looks pretty. I'm actually going with a butcher block conditioner. This is a mix of beeswax and mineral oil. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna use this. You can also use paste wax. This is one that's really hard to go wrong with because it's just such an easy and simple finish. Something about this finish too is you can always reapply it later on and it gives you just a really natural look and feel to the wood. And it's really making that white oak green pop as well as those little toothpicks. They're actually starting to show up now. So that's a good sign. So we've got the four eye bolts that we're gonna use for our tuner. And you can see they're gonna have to stagger a little bit. They're gonna have to overlap. So it's gonna look something like this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these little nuts and I'm gonna put them on. So I'm gonna start them kind of low. I'm gonna tie the string here and then I'm gonna put it down through the hole in the bottom. And then I'll be able to tighten this with this little nut to get the string into tune. All right, everyone. Next, I'm gonna show you how to string this thing. This is a little bit harder than I thought it was. I was watching a bunch of different YouTube videos. And there's not a lot of cigar box ukulele stringing the instructional videos out there. So let me show you how to do it. I've already got three strings done. I'm gonna show you on the last string. The first thing to do is take this nut 
and run it pretty much to the end of the eye bolt as far as you can. And then we're gonna take our string and we're gonna tie a square knot on the end. Maybe there's a better knot to do here. I was not the best Boy Scout when it came to knots. It's kind of a tricky thing to do. Square knot, just in case you're wondering, kind of like tying your shoes, but left over right to start, and then you go right over left. That's how you get your square knot. And then pull that as tight as you can. It's not gonna feel too good on your fingers, but now when you pull from this end, it's actually gonna tighten that all up. Now I had to make a couple changes. Got the holes here still, and then I put four screws right here because I was trying to do the traditional little wraparound knot, and I don't know if I'm just weak sauce or what, but it wasn't working for me. With this screw loose, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the string through the hole like this. Now that we've got that, we're pulling it tight. Tight as you can. Okay. Now we're gonna run the string back through the same hole. And then you're gonna pull tight. Now, just to be ghetto, because we're cool like that, and this is a hardware store ukulele, so I don't know what people are expecting me. Here we go. See how I just wrapped that around the screw? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver and I'm gonna tighten this. Now be careful, I broke a string doing this, and that is not fun. Don't break strings. What we might need to do, is actually create a loop like this. See, that wasn't quite catching. This is actually the thickest string, so the hardest string. Okay, so we're gonna create a loop like this. Just ran it under, and then we're gonna catch it in its own little loop. Like that. And now, we're going to tighten the screw. There we go, we've got it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tune this. What you're going to do is you're gonna pull up on this, tighten this little nut as you're going. It's gonna make your life a little bit easier. But you need to get the string into the groove that we carved into this thing up here. I always forget the name of it, bridge? I don't think it's a bridge. I don't remember what it's called. Whatever this thing is, we need that string to ride in that groove. Oh, flippity doo -dah. Woo! That's a good way to scare you. We're so close to being done. There it is. We got it in the groove. Now that's in the groove, all you're gonna do is you're gonna get a tuner and then you're just gonna keep tightening this until this string is in tune. All right, let's give it a test. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And then feel free to check me out on Instagram. I post a lot of my projects there, just pictures of them that I don't do in videos. So if you want to see more projects from me, follow me on Instagram.